Hi, I'm John Herring with Swan Energy. I'm the Director of Exploration here, and today we're going to talk about how to read a mud log. A mud log is taken while drilling the well. As we drill approximately an 8-inch well two miles into the ground, uh, all the samples we drill up are circulated to the surface. As they are, they're looked at by a geologist under a microscope and tested for a lot of different properties. As well as that, a mud log also keeps track of the operations going on on the rig. Let's hop right into a mud log and see what one looks like. First we go over the cover page. The cover page gives you a lot of information about the well that's drilling, um, the company doing the mud logging. On this cover page you'll see the well name Rex 118. It's a well we drilled about a year and a half ago in McLean County, Oklahoma. It'll give you the location, the license number, which is also known as the API number, American Petroleum Institute. The spud date, when we commenced drilling operations, the coordinates, the ground elevation, um, the logged interval, that's where they started logging. Typically we start mud logging at a depth sufficient to catch our first perspective zone, which is usually five to 7,000 feet where we start mud logging in McLean County. Um, gives you the operator and the geologist on the well. The second page of the mud log gets a little more into what you're going to see on your mud log. First, you're going to see a list of rock types. Those rock types are color-coded um, with patterns to tell you which rock types you're going to be seeing and how they're going to depict them in the mud log. For our purposes, we really are only interested in shale, sandstone, and limestone. You will see occasional dolomite, but the shale, limestone, and sandstone are primarily what we see in McLean County. Below that, you'll see a box of accessories. Now, these are all the minerals that can be found, or fossils, or little stringers of coal, or anhydrite, or dolomite. Also, textures. They're not as important. They will be used very occasionally in the mud log. We may or may not see one as we evaluate this log. And then there's other symbols for under porosity, whether they're calling them rounded, subrounded, oil shows, even spotted. And that one we will certainly see and the sorting well moderate poor. Um, that's also described in, in writing, the sorting and the rounding and the porosity. Uh, we'll see that as we go along. Just below the other symbols, you'll see the header for the log. This will be referred back to to see what's going on on this log. You can think of this log as an EKG while drilling. And really, I'm listing about six EKGs here. First box on the left is survey data. Gives you an idea of what's going on with the rig at any given time. The second one, blue, red, ROP, rate of penetration, how fast we're drilling. Typically sandstones drill fast and shales can drill and limestones drill slow. So the speed of drilling gives you an idea of what you're drilling through. Then you'll get the depth curve and that just tells you what depth the samples are coming from listed every 50 feet. The porosity. Porosity is visual porosity that the mud logger can see and he'll do it from poor to fair to good. The more porosity, the better. Lithology, that's where we go back to those rock types we saw earlier. That lithology is looking at the sample stacked on top of each other under the microscope. Every 10 feet they look at a sample and tell you you've got a sand where they see a shale. So it's a visual representation of what we're drilling. The next box is for fluorescence. If you take an oil saturated rock and put it under a black light, it lights up and it fluoresces. So the, one of the first things they do with samples is put them under a black light and look for fluorescence. So more fluorescence, and there it's listed again in poor to fair to good. Good fluorescence is preferred to poor fluorescence or none. Leaching, that's if oil runs out of the samples, if there's staining, if there's streaming, you'll see defined a little or talked about a little later. Poor, fair to good. Leaching is obviously preferred. It's an oil show. Then the geological descriptions, that's where the geologist or the mud logger is going to describe everything he sees when he looks in the microscope. And we'll go through some examples of that as we go forward. The last box is TG C1 through 5. That's gas. Not only are they measure or looking at the samples of rock that come out of the ground, they're also looking at the gas that's in the mud. If you drill through a section of rock that's oil saturated, it's going to also have gas in it and you'll get an increase of gas when those samples come to the surface. So more gas in this is preferred to less. You'll see TG trip gas 
That's the gas after they make a bit trip that's been building up at the bottom of the hole for 12 hours between when they stopped drilling, got out of the hole, changed their bit, and got back down the bottom. Then you'll see C1 through 4. Um, C1 through 4 is uh, the type of hydrocarbon we found. C1 is methane, C2 is ethane, C3 propane, and C4 is butane. An oil zone is going to have a lot of C4s because they're longer hydrocarbons and they're more oily. It's more of a liquid. We'll look at that as we go forward. So let's hop right down to our first zone of interest. We're going to go through five zones on this mud log. We're going to go through the Deese zone, which contains five sandstones. We're going to go through the Hunton, the Viola, and the Bromides, the first and second Bromide. Go down to a depth of about 6,980 feet you'll see the first Dees, or Abernathy. As you see, they had, saw a little bit of sand there, a little porosity. There was no indication of gas on the gas curve, which is not surprising. The Abernathy does not produce out here, or the first Dees. What we really are interested in is the third and fourth Dees. As we go down, we get to the second Dees, also called the Pharaoh, at 7182. Once again, you'll start seeing some sand in the lithology, and you'll see some porosity, but nothing on the gas curve to indicate that there's oil there. Down to the third Dees, the Gibson, same sort of scenario. You see sand, you see some porosity, but not a lot of gas. Now we get down to the heart zone at 60, minus 6445, or a depth of 7688. When you see the minus, that's a subsea depth that normalizes everything to sea level. That heart zone, same thing. We got some sand, a little porosity, nothing much to speak of on gas. So now let's go down to our first, what I would call, show. And this is what we're really looking for on a mud log. Down at 7,900. We'll start from left to right. Let's start on the very left. There you'll see the drilling curve in minutes per foot. In this case, we're drilling about one minute per foot until we get to a limestone. Then it drills out at four to five minutes a foot and then back into the sandstone. In the middle curve, you'll see that limestone sitting right on top of the sandstone. If you go back to your rock types, you'll see that the aqua blue is limestone and the dotted yellow is sandstone. To the left of that, you'll see the porosity, fair porosity almost throughout that whole limestone. To the right of it, you'll start to see the fluorescence and the leaching. You see fluorescence just to the right of the yellow and leaching on the far right. Now we go to the description. All of these are acronyms or abbreviations for what he's seeing from rounded sand grains to sub-rounded sand grains, what the color is, how hard they are, whether they're fractured or not. There's also an oil field glossary we post that you can go back to to refer if you want to see exactly what those stand for. What's really important is at the very end of his description, he'll get visible fractured porosity, so good looking porosity, increasing dull gold fluorescence. It's fluorescing under the black light, it's an indication of oil. Blooming white yellow cut, which means when they drop lighter fluid on it, oil cuts out of it, and there's an immediate yellow white residual ring. That oil then floats to the side of the dish that they've just cut it in, and it lights up under a black light. All of that is a real good indication that you found some oil. To what extent or how productive, that's yet to be seen, but there are certainly some hydrocarbons there. Then we look out to the right. You'll see a big increase. FM gas, formation gas, 424 unit max. If you see above it and below it, the gas is running at about 50 total units, and it spiked up to 424 units. That's Certainly a very good gas show, and something to look forward to looking at on the electric logs. One thing to note is exactly what I just said, that the mud log is used to know where to evaluate the electric logs. It gives you a good idea that there was a show there, there's probably some oil. You need to do a much better job of interpreting the actual electric logs, but it gives you an idea that you've, you have something to look at. As we move down the well bore, we get to the hunt and... The Hunt and Limestone at 8184, what you'll see right there on the far left is a, what I would call a drilling break. We went from drilling one minute a foot to eight minutes a foot. 
limestone is much harder to drill than a sandstone or a shale. In the middle, you'll see the limestone, you'll see the description, and then to the right, you'll see that we carry gas through about the top 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 feet of limestone. There's also a note here, losing mud. Add lost circulation material. Lost 150 barrels total. That means that some of the mud we were drilling with went out into the formation. It's actually a really good thing in a limestone, because the limestone you can think of as your countertop. If it's highly fractured, it can absorb drilling fluid. If it's not fractured, it won't absorb drilling fluid. So finding fractures and losing drilling fluid, um, typically not looked at as a good thing, actually is a good thing in these limestones. As we go down through the hunting, you'll see the formation gas spike up to 275 units. Again, 305 units in the middle of it. Good connection gas of 320 units and 275 down as we get to the bottom of the limestone. And we go next through the sylvan shale and into the viola limestone at 8477. You'll notice on your drilling curve it actually wraps around past starting at 8520 and all the way down through 8570. The viola limestone is one of the hardest rocks we drill out here and takes some time. The interesting part of the Viola limestone probably happens down at about 8,700 feet. You get a formation gas of 95 units. You also see some, start seeing some oil shows in the samples. Let's go down and do what we consider to be our primary target, the bromide zone. The bromide zone starts on at this well at 8,940 feet. 8,942 is where the mud logger actually call it. Uh, that's where you start seeing sand. What you really want to pay attention to in the bromide is the gas curve. Typically, you will not produce without a gas show, and there are some gas shows that will not produce. So having a gas show is highly important. You'll see one. Max 268 units right there at 8970. <laughs> if we go to the description at the bottom of it, you see gold fluorescence. Fair to good porosity, some integrating brown staining no cut, which means he can see that the samples are stained with oil. He didn't get a cut off of it, but we did get a gas show. That zone, when we perforated it and produced it for a year, made all oil and no water. Um, that's the only indication we had, because the actual logs don't look that good, but the mud log told us we had drilled through something that had hydrocarbons in it. As we come down to the massive bromide at 8983, what you'll see on the far right is you really don't have much of a gas show at all. Not a whole lot of increase in gas. You'll see no oil shows. We did test that zone um, due to the fact that we had 65 units of gas and then formation of 72. We considered that a minor gas show and actually saw a little bit of fluorescence in the samples. When we shot that zone we got all water. So that you're looking at a very good distinct difference between oil and water in the bromides. A formation gas of 268 units and a formation gas of 72 units. So the mud log can be very good at identifying where you have hydrocarbons and where you don't have hydrocarbons.